of our wider region is under deliberate and immense attack on cultural values and artifacts, leaving their hometowns and memories behind. In a recent UN summit, Director General of UNESCO calls this situation a cultural cleansing in the Middle East and continues to say that this destruction shows how terrified the history and culture the extremists are in the hope to draw attention of the international community to this humanitarian crisis. Uh, today, when we, look at, when we look at the map of Syria, uh, we can see how uh, terrifying and pessimistic uh, the situation is. The war and uh, the use of heavy equipment have led to the destruction of a lot of cult uh, cultural heritage and will eventually lead to the destruction of what is left. Another issue in the, in, uh, is that many sites have been uh, conferred, converted into military use, which hinder, uh, hinders the possibility of implementation protection uh, plans. Uh, looting and the illicit trafficking uh, are an old problem, but one um, that has worsened with the current situation. Uh, it, um, it is very challenging to reduce it due to the lack of resource to miniature site, uh, uh, this site. There are two kinds of looting uh, uh, of antiquities, looting by amateur and by specialist. The solution here is difficult and uh, sensitive and must uh, be dealt very carefully, carefully. And I think that the publication of information the participation of the local councils and civic association in the process of uh, protection, the education uh, seminar in school, uh, the filed visit and workshop would all play a positive role and will facilitate, facilitate our tax and dispute uh, awareness among our community communities. There are a lot of initiative, announcement and publi uh, political uh, speech which call for the protection of cultural heritage in Syria and uh, denouncing criminal acts. Unfortunately, this uh, had minimal result. The action uh, that were taken and to be taken are, are very limited and confined mostly to the publication of the red list of the Syrian artifacts. Uh, the formation of a database and the office uh, to follow up on the situation in Syria by UNESCO. Some training set up by and hosted by UNESCO for the cadres from the Syrian General Director uh, of Antiquities and Museum, uh, who are working on their own to save and uh, protect the Syrian heritage. Uh, but unfortunately, their activities are limited because of many obstacles and it is non-existing exist uh, in the areas that are outside of regime control. Documentation is necessary and is an important step but is not sufficient. Other groups or situ institutions have been creating archiving and this is a very important and crucial step because it will facilitate, facilitate our intervention for post-war uh, reconstruction. Beside this effort, a professional team of volunteers training to do something on the ground of direct intervention at some sites. And I can say that we have, after one year of work, we were able to accomplish, it, accomplish some of this project regardless of the war and in spite of all the circumstances uh, taking place in Syria. This collaboration is a result of a team of professional, uh, professional of archaeologists, engineers, and curators who have risked and are risking their life in order to save what can be saved. One special effort accomplished through uh, this collaboration as the protection of the mosaic of, at uh, the Museum of Marra, Marat and Norman. The first step, as we like in the, and we, this photo, the first step in uh, this work was to get rid of rubble, uh, sands, and was that accumulated uh, over the last four years, during which the museum was neglected because of the conflict. The mosaic were then very carefully cleaned 
of dust uh, the, the, uh, that covered them. The next step, please. Please clean the mosaic. The next step was to apply a facing with a layer of glue and then with a um, flesh, flesh spawn buritin cloth. This is a first phase of glue, and after that, with the cloth, please. After, please. Finally, the walls were uh, strong, strong death from inside uh, to absorb the negative effect and to avoid collapse. Sandbags were put, uh, put down against the mosaic hung on walls and in front of them to offer more protection and to minimize the dam damage in case of the wall collapse. As we see in this uh, image, we put the, uh, the sand back for protecting the mosaic. It should uh, be noted that all the materials were applied on this mosaic can easily be cleaned or taken off without using any negative, without causing any negative effect uh, to the mosaic. But the museum uh, was bombed by the regime in June 2012. Please see another one, please. As we see in this uh, image, the bombardment of the museum. And part of the building was destroyed. The good news that the sandbag have played an important role and they have much reduced the effect of the bombing. You can see the photo. This is uh, it, the state of the mosaic after the bombardment. Actually, the team is still working at the museum to remove the debris and clean the courtyard. You can see the photo, please. Yes, this is the photo after the clean, this before. And this after we will finish the we finish the work already. Just second one, please. And also this after, as see before and after. All this project confirmed a reality in the Syrian situation. Within a little financial uh, support and a lot of emotional investment, uh, we can do a lot uh, for the protection of cultural heritage. And thank you. The topic of my talk is the way that we can use satellite imagery to study conflict and the ways that we can use it to document things that are happening on the ground that we might not be able to see because we may not have access because things are very dangerous, uh, things happen in remote areas. So we are finding ways to use satellite imagery to document things like violations of international humanitarian law, human rights violations, and looking at the destruction of civilian areas, and also, obviously, for the, to for the topic today of cult cultural property. So I'm going to actually start talking about Syria and Iraq, and I thought a good way to start with this is actually a, uh, some satellite images from, uh, we call the satellites uh, lights at night, so they're there's a set of satellites that collect imagery at night. And so they uh, collect imagery of places that are lit up at night. And this was actually from the New York Times. And so you can see in March of 2012, this is Syria, you can see all of the urban areas that are lit up. You can see Aleppo, Damascus, all of these places. And then this is December of 2012, and you can see how dark so much of the country has become over the course of the conflict. And this is really a great way to see very clearly the movement of people and the changes that are happening across an entire country. So I wanna show you uh, Ebla to start with because I wanna show you the, the way that we do our analysis. The next slide. So that's just a map of Ebla. So we start with uh, the newest image first. So at the time when we did this analysis, August 2014 was the newest one. And so what we do is we go through the image and we document all of the things that we see. So berms, we see revetments, we see uh, berms with encampments, all of these types of things that we document in, this, in the satellite image. In next. 
and we also will incorporate the information we get from our partners on the ground. So if you look at this here, you can match it up to this site here. So that's one of the great ways that we can match the ground photographs and the satellite imagery so you can see things from multiple uh, directions. So then we, ba we basically just step back in time. So this was stepping back a year, uh, and then we go back again to the beginning of 2013, where we only saw tents, and uh, 2012 there was tents, and then we get back to December 2011 was the first time, that was the first image that we could get that didn't show any damage to the site. So it's, it's a very thorough type of analysis that we do for each of the sites that we look at. We look at a lot of images uh, for each of the things that, that we're studying and make sure that we get a really good timeline of what's happening. So this was a part of the, the archeological park uh, before, and then we go to the next one. So you can see that a road was built through the middle of the site. We see some more of the berms. We saw military emplacements with, uh, with uh, firing locations in them. So these are all things that we saw on the site prior to ISIS taking over. So this is the Temple of Baal uh, before it was blown up. And then this is the, the after image of it. Um, I do want to take, I guess, a minute here to actually address one of the things that, that you mentioned about thinking about the ethics of this technology. So this is actually the first time I've shown these images because one of the things that we're very concerned about is that the fact that we can, I can get these images within an hour or two of when they're collected. So if I take these images and then immediately publish them, there's a lot of on, there's a lot of risks for people that are working in the air. People like Shaker and all of his colleagues might be in this area. And so if I'm releasing satellite imagery that's showing uh, these types of things, or if it's actually contradicting things that maybe uh, rumors are saying that maybe something has been destroyed, it could actually make things much more uh, difficult for people that are on the ground, much more unsafe for people on the ground. Also, this really, I feel... If you're, everyone is rushing to uh, publish imagery as soon as possible, it, I really feel like it's just feeding into the propaganda machine of ISIS. We're really just doing exactly what they want. So one of the things that we've, uh, start, that we've really been doing in our project is not doing these rapid releases of imagery just because we do not want to be in any way associated with a site being further damaged than what it was, than what is already going to happen or may not happen. The last example, destruction of Neba Yunus. We can go to the next slide. So um, we have an image from, this is actually a really good example of when you get t satellite images in very close proximity, it can really help you to map the chain of events very closely in time. The dialogues about genocide and human rights that people are becoming more and more con concerned about because we can see in this satellite image from just August the 2nd that they ha these are all um, heavy trucks like dump trucks and so they were going up to the site and removing the rubble of the destroyed structures and then by the end of August uh, less than three weeks later they had base they had these um, excavators that are flattening out the ground after they've removed the rubble. So this is a way that they're really very literally erasing the past. And these are, these are the things that uh, I think we're all terrified of seeing. Uh, the previous presentations uh, have, I think, shown us uh, it's what kind of a terrible situation uh, we are confronted with. Uh, and how important uh, international cooperation and also individual efforts uh, are uh, while facing uh, this uh, situation. Uh, today I will try uh, uh, to explain what UNESCO is doing against this threat and uh, because UNESCO uh, is the international body uh, who has a mandate uh, 
in addition to uh, cooperation in education, science, and uh, communication. Of course, culture, protection of the cultural heritage. But uh, UNESCO takes uh, the cultural heritage, of course, not only as the tangible one, which means monuments uh, and uh, buildings uh, which have uh, heritage value, uh, but at a, in a wider way, uh, because the cultural heritage also includes intangible heritage, uh, which passes through human beings, uh, rituals, traditions, uh, oral or musical or otherwise. Um, and uh, also uh, the diversity, cultural diversity, uh, is of course uh, very important in describing the heritage. In tangible heritage, we are faced with uh, a problem of uh, illegal trafficking. And uh, so when you uh, see the situation in the major Middle East countries now, all the uh, dimensions of cultural heritage is under threat. Uh, and the geography is, of course, extends beyond Syria. We focus in this session on Syria, but of course it's also Iraq. Yemen, uh, Mali, uh, sometimes there are more individual cases like in Tuni the attack to museums in Egypt and Tunisia. Uh, so this shows that how uh, extensive uh, assault uh, is going on against uh, cultural heritage. And UNESCO uh, describes this as an uh, this assault as an affront to common human values because uh, heritage uh, is a symbol of uh, identity and uh, also an element of uh, social uh, cohesion. What UNESCO is doing uh, is, um, first of all, it aims to create uh, international awareness uh, by different campaigns. Uh, secondly, is um, sharing of information. I mean, to 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 see what's happening already in the ground, a mapping of uh, the situation, uh, and your work, of course, is valuable, very valuable in this regard, to making an inventory of the uh, heritage destroyed. Uh, a third uh, mission is, uh, which is very important, of course, to, inc uh, to increase uh, coordination and cooperation at international level between governments and um, in international organizations, NGOs, and even individuals, of course. Uh, UNESCO is a catalyst uh, to bolster this uh, cooperation and mobilize uh, the member states uh, in this direction. It also includes uh, strengthening of the network uh, among national and international actors. Uh, another element of UNESCO's mandate in this regard is uh, to implement the legal framework uh, which is already uh, in effect. Uh, UNESCO has um, uh, many conventions, international conventions, which are legally binding or protocols um, and other documents, uh, declarations, uh, etc. And a good implementation of all these by all the parties can make a difference. Turkey, of course, is in a very um, special situation as a neighbor of uh, uh, Syria. We have uh, uh, our longest border is with uh, is with uh, Syria. And uh, this brings a uh, responsibility to Turkey uh, to help to out of the, the situation. But of course, we are uh, affected tremendously in, in many different ways. Uh, as I said, at the Turkish National Commission, uh, we took the issue with all its dimensions and developed some ideas. Uh, but it's not only Turkish National Commission for UNESCO, but the government is also uh, Minister of Culture, uh, Minister of uh, Customs, uh, and Minister of Interior, uh, they are focused on uh, now dealing uh, with uh, smuggling of cultural artifacts through Syria. Turkey has, uh, first of all, uh, 
we have published Interpol's database on stolen works of art, uh, and these have been distributed to all the governorates with the aim of providing uh, access. Uh, also, uh, it's published on web page on the, of the uh, Minister of Culture. Um, all the uh, officials, uh, government office uh, bodies, uh, especially at the border area, have been warned uh, to bring uh, the suspected uh, artifacts, suspected of being of Syrian origin, uh, bring to the museums. Um, there is a red list of Syrian cultural, uh, cultural objects published by ICOM. Uh, it's now it's been translated into Turkish and uh, uh, there are training programs for the officials, uh, seminars on exchanging information on the protection of uh, cultural assets of Syrian origin um, and many other activities. I mean, as I said, it's an interministerial activity, Ministry of Culture, Interior, Customs, um, and a huge uh, work uh, is uh, being done in this regard.